The Euros is underway and it's the kind of tournament that has a buzz about it. There's a lot of intense action, the cities are electrifying with people from all over the world descending to celebrate football. And this year too, there is a lot of frenzy. At the heart of it are the fans, the passionate, sometimes over the top fans. And this edition is having its own share of controversy and chaos. So what's the latest? Serbia Football Association has threatened to exit Euros. That is, if UEFA, the governing body for European football, fails to take any action against Croatia and Albania. Serbia claims that their fans chanted, kill, kill the Serb, during Croatia's Euros match against Albania. And it was not just a small section or a group of, or a handful of fans, it was a horde of them. And it was very acrimonious. Following the threat of a pullout, UEFA, is now under immense pressure and they say they have launched an investigation but given the sensitivity of the chance and the behavior of these fans UEFA is also adamant to use this incident to set an example the exceptional football the football that we have witnessed all week has contrastingly been met by the most ugly behavior by the fans surrounding it in just a week the euros has been hit by not just this but multiple cases of hooliganism it in fact began during the England and Serbia match and it's no shocker, English fans have a history of creating nuisance wherever they go. But this time it was the Serbs who lit the fire. About 150 people were involved in a brawl outside a rest restaurant near the stadium. This was before the match started. Following the brawl, one English supporter and seven Serbian fans were detained. The German security forces that you see there took swift action and so the matter was contained. But that was just the start. Serb fans have been inciting violence at the tournament. They held banners that included Kosovo with the slogan No Surrender. This was during their match against England. And they've also indulged in racial slurs against some of England's players. So clearly UEFA is in a bit of a spot now. Serbia is threatening to pull out of Euros when a massive section of their own fans are indulging in chants and activities that have only disrupted the tournament. Serbia is that backbencher in the class who is quietly playing truant while the teacher is looking away but is ready to point fingers at the rest and threaten a boycott. And UEFA has a bunch of violators in this regard. Serbia isn't the only one using political provocative messages on their banner. Albania fans have been doing the same, displaying banners with a map extending their borders into neighbouring countries. And when we talk of rowdy fans, how can the English be left behind? number of England supporters were filmed singing a controversial chant. It was a reference to German casualties in World War II. It's called 10 German Bombers, a reference to the German Air Force and English counterattacks. And despite an appeal by both British and German police to refrain from such singing, there has been no pause. English fans have been at it, taunting their German counterparts in their own city. And this is even before the two have faced off on the field. During this year's Champions League fixtures, Bayern and ba Barcelona supporters were all banned from travelling for their away legs because they were spewing racist chants. UEFA was firm enough to take action then, so what is stopping them now? Yes, this is not easy. It is difficult to pick out culprits in a massive sea of supporters. But even so, action of unruly fans have been levied on the clubs associated with it. We've seen that in the past, but in this case, it is a tad more sensitive. There are countries involved here. We are speaking of geopolitical repercussions that may have consequences and a fallout that we cannot quite comprehend just yet. Most of the stadiums in Germany have a capacity of more than 50,000. So that's what you're talking of. And then, of course, there are fans outside the stadium. That's a large number too. So yes, keeping a check on a massive crowd that is overflowing in these cities is difficult, yes. But here's the thing, it will take just one unruly mob, one comment or chant here to spark off violence that will be difficult to stop. 
shouldn't the UEFA swing into action at this point to try to put some checks in place to prevent that from happening? There is no room for racism or any kind of provocative chance that could incite violence. And if a country's fans indulge in that, the football association of that country should pay the price. Because at stake is a tournament and anything untoward that threatens to disturb it could prove to be fatal. A first-of-a-kind sports show that's played on a different turf. A first-of-a-kind sports show that will always come up with a winner. Are you looking for perspectives that go beyond the scoreline? Hi, I'm Rupa Ramani and catch a 360-degree view of the sporting world with me here on First Post in our special First Sports. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison Lagrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. From elections, to climate change, to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.